Us. Us. Welcome back. Hi, everyone. We're back from Japan. We had a great trip to Japan. It was your first time, was it? Yes. Us. Mitch's first time. Your, your, your hundredth first. time? Yeah, my first time this month. <laughs> but anyway, great time was had by all. It was our Sokyo Kishin World Championship, and there were some great fights. Fantastic fights, yeah, yeah. in all the divisions. And great uh, kata. The Aussie team did really well, had a bit of a tough draw. They ended up, most of them, losing to eventual winners yes, or eventual yes. finalists. Um, a shout-out to Aidan Obeid, who fought in 18 and under. He, uh, he drew a Japanese lad, Kashiwada, I think his name was, and he really was doing well. He was like, giving it to this guy in the first round, went an extension, uh, and he lost the decision uh, in the first extension. And that kid went on and smashed everyone and won the tournament, won the world title. So uh, bad luck for Aiden, but it was a good learning experience. Uh, this week we've got uh, wrestling sensation uh, Ben Askren, two times NCAA champion, two times wrestler of the year, two times uh, most pins uh, of the year. And pins also means win by superiority. In wrestling they have a rule where you get a certain number of points up they just end the bout because it's clear superiority. Uh, you know, he's done all that. He's an Olympian, uh, Bellator to champion, 1FC Sweet. champion. Great stuff. And his seminar is this weekend in Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Uh, if you want to sign up, go to the website, budokarate.com, and, and you'll see, you'll see, you'll see a sign up page there. Just click on and. Because it's a wrestling week, wrestling theme. We just came back from a good wrestling, wrestling session. session. Oops, yeah, yep. we just had a nice wrestling session. Uh, today we're going to focus on a uh, two-on-one. The two-on-one I like because it's like the brother of the, the arm drag. Uh, the arm drag is uh, it's a beautiful wrestling technique, but it also uh, rings, reminds me of uh, very soft um, Chinese martial arts. Kyokushin they say is a hard style, but I disagree. I think it's Goju influence is much stronger than the Shotokan influence. Shotokan is a hard style. Goju is a soft style. And it depends what criterion you use to determine that. And the main criterion used to determine whether something's a hard style or soft style is the linear or circular motion. And Kyokushin is very circular, uh, influenced by Goju uh, and also Masayama's own theories on circle and point, which he was very much in love with. So uh, we're going to, you'll find when we do the, the uh, two on one and the, and the arm drag, there's a lot of circular motion in that as well. Uh, and it combines very well with uh, good karate. So we're just going to cover that today. Us, Marco. Yep. Thanks, Marco. Rochelle. We caught up with Rochelle in Japan. We had a nice gathering uh, of a, some of the folks in Japan, Us Sensei Mike, Javier, good, Us from Mar, Mar del Plata, Argentina, beautiful, Javier, thank you, Gustav, good to see you, namaste. Uh, so we're, we're just going to cover this uh, two-on-one arm drag concept and let us know, we're just, we're trying out these new, it was nice trying out, the, it was nice to see you too, Rochelle, Rochelle did her showdown grading, good honor, did very well. Um, we're trying out these new uh, la la lapel mics and uh, let us know how they go. Reggie, don't. See, that's not really big there, is it? I don't want to mute it. We're not getting a lot of. Are we hearing us okay? Can you hear us okay? Let us know. If, give us a thumbs up if the sound is good before Mitch snatches this chair from under me. There we go, <laughs> beautiful. Sound clear, beautiful. Okay, so two on one concepts. The two on one, as the name implies, is talking about two arms controlling one arm here. This kind of thing, this is a two on one. This can also be regarded as a two on one when you're actually controlling the hand like that. That's a two-on-one of another sort. But the two-on-one here or here 
or here, are very strong control techniques. So we're going to run through a few of those. Very common in grappling, wrestling, this sort of thing. Even in the street, guys will just go crack and, and collar tie. Okay, and they get a good grip. They'll pull your head down and they'll push in with their elbow there like that. This is why one of the reasons you see wrestlers with jacked up ears, another reason why when wrestlers fight, they'll shrug their shoulders up. You see from the side, I shrug my shoulders up. Because if Mitch slaps on a collar tie and I'm not shrugged up, it's very hard to get off. Okay, good collar tie is extremely difficult to get off. You can, if, if, if he gets a good tie and I can't get it off, you can knock it off like that, but it's really hard. The main way you want to get it off is I'm, I'm here and I, I um, shrug up. Okay, let's go at an angle so you can see my shoulders kind of shrug. And, then, and I just shrug. Without the shrug, he gets a good collar tie. With the shrug, it's already half off. You can see all I need to do now is just turn and shake it off. So the way I want to work on the collar tie is I'm going to come in, I'm going to slap across here and pull it off there like that. So I'm in here, bang, comes on, I'm going to pull it off. Again, boom, there like that and gather it in and I'm holding it like it's my long lost baby. Okay, I don't want to let it go. Remember, leverage is more of my body against less of his. And the, the way you get that control is I connect. So if I'm here, I have my hands exactly the same grip but my body is not connected to his arm and I try to get, it's just very easy for Mitch to get out. On the other hand, if I get my body on his arm, now he tries to get out and he can still get out, but it's much harder, right? He gets out. Boom. Now, if I use even more of my body, namely I want, and this is a really key point, I want to get my shoulder vertical and slightly forward of his shoulder. So when I get that shoulder above and over there, now when I hold it, now he tries to get out, and it's really hard to get out. You see that? It's really very difficult. So watch again. What I do is off the collar tie, I come here, and look, my shoulder goes vertical over his shoulder there. Let's turn around. So now I have my shoulder, my chest, my arms, and my leg all connected to his arm. It's very hard for him to get out. One thing he can do is he'll push away there. I love it when they do that because all I'm going to do is go here and bang. You, you can take them with your throw. That other way. Yeah, it was a nice throw. Okay, so the collar tie, the main thing I want to work on is this shrug. See that? Even without my hands, I get a good shrug. You can drill doing that. It's a four-step process. Shrug, and I look behind. And I turn, and my shoulder is what disconnects his arm. Now, if I add the hands, come up here. Now I pull it off. See that, the connection? And this one comes up. I like to wrap my hand all the way up here and get control of the arm here. I get my shoulder on top of his arm, and it's very, very strong. Okay, from a karate perspective, now I can simply just let go and punch. Or what I like to do is pop this down there and punch. So it's like a form of dirty boxing. Bang, bang. Once again, off the collar tie, bang. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. Yeah. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. I'm going to come in here. Another thing I like to do is instead of going with a monkey grip, in other words, my fingers together with my thumb, I go C grip and then come in and come in for a wrist lock. Tap, tap. Very, is it? Is that that's, yeah, that's good, yeah. Okay. Sometimes they'll start to work their hand out of that. I'm going to bend it back this way now. There. That's also pretty strong. Push. Okay. So once again, one, two, three. Bring it up. Wrist lock. Control there. And I have very strong control. And then I can, if, you, if the force continuum allows you to. Boom. Yeah. Okay. So. Collar tie. This is what we're looking at. The counter to the collar tie. One. See, I'm shrugged. Two. I rotate, look behind, and push his arm with my shoulder. And then come up and catch. Both hands are underneath. I don't want to do this. Come and bring the hand over. This is an error. What I want to do is just come here and come in there. By getting the shoulder pressure, I can drag down and start to attack his leg. So 
if you want to take them down or knock them down, let's have a look at that. There, one, two, three. I'm going to drag down my shoulder and from that position, shoot for his far leg. Bam. You can take that far leg. We're not, not doing takedowns, but you get the drift. One, two, three. Down here, and I can even take this leg and pull it up there like that. Okay. You can also turn the two on one into an arm drag. So an arm drag is different. The arm drag it picks it up before he gets the collar tie on. The collar tie, he's already he's attacked with the collar tie. But once that's it, it's very hard. If he's got a heavy elbow, the arm drag won't get it off. You know, you're better off chopping down there, chopping, pushing up there, or as I said, in here like this. In the one two three lock it in there like that okay sometimes they pull their hand back as they yes if they do that they push that way one two and i'm just going to take them down with a nice throw from there the other the other thing i like to do is yeah so i'm going to turn it into a, a two on one into an arm grab so one two i go two on one one two and then finish with the side arm movement. So watch that slow motion. One, two, in this position here. I do a kanku move. Turn it to there, pull in, and there like that. I pull, he pulls his arm back, boom. I swing it, push here, pull there. If you want to finish, you get, as Nick Hughes points out, I know this is pretty important, but I also find that when I do it, I rotate my arm and that gives me a better purchase on the choke as well. Two on one. First thing is the shrug. An ounce of prevention is worth a ton of cure. One. Look behind, rotate. Two. My shoulder is putting pushing into his tricep. Three. I like to come high, all the pressure on his on his shoulder. There like that. Okay? Once again. One, two, shoulder pressure down there like that, okay? I can even come behind him. That's when this arm, I like to roll it up here first, take the hip and then take him down that way or even continue on behind or the side and with a knee bump there. Okay, so I just wanted to do this two on one because it's such a valuable technique. There are other takedowns. Another one I really like, which I won't show here because of the floor, but one, two, as he pulls his hand in, I let him push it in and look, I lock his arm up in this little, all I do, this hand just continues through. There, this hand pushes to his belly button, boom, and I lock it in. One, two, okay, one, two. I've gone C grip rather than this grip because I find if I go here, he can, yeah, he's, as he pulls his hand back, sometimes he can get it out. So I go C grip there, one, two. And then from that position, it's a sacrifice. I come underneath and roll him over that way. It's very, very effective. We've done that in training. Two is the come along wrist lock, one, two, in this position there. If he fights to straighten his arm, I'm gonna bend it backwards now. See, like that. That gives you really good control of what's going on. You can even That's slip amazing. things. Yeah. That was part of the old, what do you do if he's too strong flow that we used to do? We, we form, come across, bang, here like this, come in there, round, boom, there, and that didn't work, come up there, boom, and you work on the two fingers like that. So two on one, one, two, high shoulder pressure, okay? I'm not showing him a feet, but the feet, the reality of the feet is if I was to clear this front leg now, boom, it puts sudden pressure on them, they hit the mat. Face first. Face first, yeah. The uh, figure four lock in the arm. And the other one, which I really love, turning it into an arm drag. The arm drag there like that. The arm drag is an early two on one. So here, bang, I'll just do it to you, kid. See that? You can just drill it like that. Boom. He goes to push me. He goes to push, bang. Yeah. And then what I do is I'll pick it up and hit the arm. 
there's a um, radial nerve under there, you can hit it with a cock hand, boom, and roll, and pull, okay? You pass it like a footy ball. One, two, pass across, come in, look, this hand pushes, I come into there. Very simple technique. There, like that, and you take his head to his heels. Don't drag him backwards, because you're dragging backwards, eventually you hit the wall, and it does things to you, head butts you, and all kinds of stuff. But if I take his heel, head to his heels, now he goes nowhere except straight down. So I push his hand in there like that. Okay, so they're just a few little snippets about a nice way to use that two-on-one against the collar tie. You need to practice it, the two-on-one. Uh, the, the collar tie is very, very, very debilitating if you don't know what to do. You see wrestlers, they just smash people. And uh, and uh, if you don't have an answer for it, you're in big trouble. Masoyama said, if you get taken to the ground by a wrestler or by a judo player and you don't know what to do, you're in big trouble. And he that's that was in This Is Karate. He also pointed out that as if you want to call yourself a martial artist, you have to be comfortable and familiar with the fundamentals of all the fighting systems. Otherwise, how else can you deal with it? It's a good call. And so with wrestling, uh, you have to know the, the, the uh, two-on-one. You have to know the counter to the collar tie. You have to know the arm, the arm drag. You have to know the high crotch, the single leg, the double leg. A handful of fundamentals will help you understand how to deal with the wrestler. Anyway, guys, it was just a nice, easy one today. It's good to see us back. We had a great time in Japan. Um, Rochelle had a great time too. Uh, and we, we got to catch up with the uh, Budo Blueprint members yeah. that were there as well from your from your group, which was great to see everyone. Yeah, if you're not if you're not aware, I have a boot a group called the Budo Blueprint. Uh, go, you can go to the website Budo Karate to find out more about it. But uh, we had a great time, awesome time. And, and you uh, organised a great um, training session up at Mount Musumini. I think yeah, is that how you we say went it? up to Mount Mitsumine. Mitsumine, and then at Honbu, which was fantastic, the famous second floor dojo. Got to put some sweat on the ground with all the other legends that have done that in the last 60 years there so it's amazing it's not a big room it's it's i was surprised how it's small not it much bigger than this room we're in but the names of the people who have been through that room from the very earliest day including uh the the shigeru oyama shigeru the the, the oyama brothers nakamura uh shihan uh, everyone you could ever think of have sweated in that dojo and uh, it's great that the new owners of the building have preserved it to allow people to train. Look, guys, just a quick get together. I hope you enjoyed that. Work your two on one counters to the collar tie. Uh, and next week, we're going to come back. We're going to do a special on NK Gyakuski. NK Gyakuski is actually, I just basically, when you transfer the two on one into the it's arm the drag, it's an NK Gyakuski. Uh, so anyway, guys, short session, I know, nice and easy, but I hope uh, you got something out of that. We just wanted to say hello, say we're back in town. This weekend we're going to be uh, sweating our, our way with um, Ben Askren. Uh, make sure you go to the website, check it out. If you're in the Gold Coast or Brisbane, you want to come along, get to the website, budokarate.com, and you can sign up there, and there's a, a nice discount code uh, on the website itself. There. there you go. Thanks, guys. Good to see you.